Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. As you saw in the introduction and from the title card, I'm not making anything this week, um, but it is an unboxing. And for me, this is really an exciting costume. To give you a little background on it, as you saw from the clip, it's from a 1945 British Gainsborough Pictures film called I'll Be Your Sweetheart and it starred Margaret Lockwood, who is um, one of my favorite actresses. And she has been ever since I was a child when I saw her play the stepmother in The Slipper and the Rose. This is something really special, really exciting, and I hope that you'll enjoy looking at this costume with me. So let's get ahead and start on the unboxing. So before we get her out of the box, I just want to say that I've covered the table in acid-free tissue paper. I've also washed my hands and taken off any jewellery. So let's get her out the box. I've opened it but I haven't actually looked inside so it's going to be something for us both to witness at the same time. So she's in a black plastic bag. Just check there's nothing else in the box. So we'll get rid of that. So I know it's a two-piece dress. It's a jacket and a skirt. Um, so I don't know what's in which piece. So we'll start with the bag so we can get her out of there. So, this is the jacket. It's a satin. Um, it's a sort of grey colour, but there's also a tone of a slight brown in it as well. And then the sequins are, I would call, sort of like a raspberry colour. Um, collar and lapels in velvet as you can see and I'll do a close-up for you later um, but it still carries the original label in the back of the costume makers in Covent Garden and it's just handwritten in Miss Margaret Lockwood no identification of what the production was Um, there's cartridge pleating on the sleeves. Um, there's some internal boning in it. All the sequins have been sewn on with um, timber work. But there are some places where they are missing and one's just come off. Cuffs also in black velvet. And then it's got this lovely pleated fantail shape going on at the back of the jacket. So this is really exciting for me to see, you know, costumes from this era of British films are incredibly rare. Um, I only know of two others, which are an identical costume, both worn by Margaret Lockwood in The Wicked Lady. One which is owned by my friend who has bought this and the other is in the Victorian Albert Museum and it's her highwayman outfit. So that's the jacket. So now let's get the other one open and have a look at the skirt.
so it's a typical skirt of the period the film is set in early well turn of a century but this dress has a slightly more 1890s look to it um, so if there's one just have a quick count one two three four so there's seven panels in the skirt um, and again it has the same detailing of the sequins that was on the jacket it's lined in what looks like maybe tarlatan but it's gone quite soft which explains when you see it in the film the shape that the skirt is um, the seams are all pinked obviously no overlocking at this time and the hem is hand sewn up um, the waistband is actually quite wide and um, let me show you turn it so you can see they've actually put the sequining detail on the waistband as well just at the center front um, but yeah the waistband's quite wide and I don't really understand why and then the back of the skirt is pleated into the waistband um, and then there's the, it looks like the original fastening has moved but there's poppers on the skirt so so now that we have her out and you've had a quick look at her flat um, let's get the Stella Stevens Poseidon dress off the mannequin and get Margaret Lockwood on so here we have the dress on the stand so that you can all have a look how it looks on the mannequin so even though the costume is dated for the film 1900 thereabouts it has that very typical 1940s very wide lapel very wide shoulders very typical of wartime fashion from 1945. Here you can see that there's been some sequin loss to this side of the bodice and also to the other side too. I'm not sure if this dart here is um, a later alteration or it's something that was done at the time this is something I'm going to have to look at once I've got these sequins back on and then I can compare the spacing of these sequins with the spacing that you see on the costume in the film here you can see the beautiful cartridge pleating which I'm really surprised has lasted that's on the head of the sleeves here you can see how beautifully shaped the back of the jacket is fitted into the waist and then flaring out into the peplum at the back of the jacket. Um, there is an alteration here, coming down here on this panel. This has actually been sewn in by hand, so this should be quite easy to let go and put back to the original size. The front of the jacket has been cut with princess seams running from the shoulders through. Whereas on the back they're taken into the armhole and here you can see some of the uh, loose sequins that are happening on the board, on the jacket. So the sequins on this costume, because of the date of it, I think are celluloid sequins because there are some patches where there's been a bit of shrinkage. Um, so I don't really want to iron or steam this in any way because I don't want to cause any more of that to happen and there's obviously some sort of coating on the sequins as well because here they've turned sort of like a pearlescent colour rather than the red colour that you can see in the ones a little bit further up. So here you can see the back of the skirt and it's a wonderful shape. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to actually seeing what this looks like once it's got a petticoat underneath it. And when you look at the clip in the film of Margaret Lockwood wearing it, the, it doesn't have quite such a long 
sweep on the back of the skirt so obviously there must be um, quite a lot in the back of the petticoat frills or something to help lift it because it's not this long when you see it but there hasn't been any alteration later on. So I hope you've enjoyed looking at this costume from 1945 with me. The plan of action is to firstly make the petticoat to go underneath the skirt to give it that correct shape and then also to work on the resequining of the skirt and bodice and also maybe make the little under blouse that goes with it. So join me in the second part of this story where I'll show you the construct cutting and construction of the petticoat and I'll see you all again very soon